I think probably a lot towards the end, uh, I found uh, a number of things that were happening was not to my liking, you know. Uh, at the end, as in the end of the campaigning period? Ca uh, towards the end of the campaign period, and then uh, even on election day, mm. uh, the, uh, the inordinate uh, length of time uh, that people had to spend before they cast their votes, for example, uh, disappointed me because a lot of people, a lot of spotters were turned away or rather decided to go back. And they were frustrated. They had to wait for three or four hours before they could vote. And, and these were the things that, to me, it should never have happened. I mean, if, if, uh, uh, if you do a time and motion study, you would probably uh, can ascertain uh, the number of uh, 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 channels or lines that will be required to be established. If the last election, for example, you had four channels or four salurans, uh, with the increased number of population or voters, you probably need f six, you know. Right. But I would expect, uh, you know, these sort of things to be uh, something that will be taken into account, you see. And there were reports that um, uh, Saluran 1 and 2, those are above 50, uh, in some of the urban areas, uh, they were placed uh, uh, on the second and third floor. And, and, and people, elderly people had to you know, had to be helped up, uh, and, and it was rather onerous thing to do. So these were the things that I felt uh, uneasy, you know. But certainly, I have to confess, I didn't expect such a, a catastrophic loss. You know, I expect our margin to go down, but I didn't expect it to go down to that extent, yeah. I think you have to ask the EC, because I don't interfere in the EC. You see, the uh, administration of EC it's left to the EC. You know, they, they decide on certain things. Uh, and certain things that happen, like for example, uh, there was an incident of cutting out uh, Dr. Mahdi's picture in the in a, in a center of a big uh, uh, billboard. That was not my instruction, you know. So these are the things that happened which uh, backfired against us. Uh, they were unintended consequences, I would say. Uh, but you know the system is that everything is blamed on the government. And everything is blamed on the Prime Minister, even though you, you may not be directly responsible. But, you know, that's the way things are, you know. Well, it's a long story. <laughs> we have the time. Well, we have, we'll be here until the evening, I think, if I talk about what went wrong. Uh, it's, uh, it's actually, uh, you know, when you lose an election or you win an election, it's just not one single factor. Usually it's a multitude of factors. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, it was a systemic uh, uh, collapse, if you like, uh, of so many things. Um, internal sabotage, um, weaknesses in terms of um, their role, uh, uh, some of the attitude of our people have not changed. Uh, but essentially, um, uh, you know, if you, took, you take a big picture, uh, we fought a uh, positive campaign, you know. Uh, we thought that we had a, a, a great story to tell, where we're taking the country towards. Uh, we had a, a vision for Malaysia, uh, we had a real plan for Malaysia, we have delivered, and we know that we could deliver even more. Uh, and we thought that was good enough, a good story to tell the people. And uh, we had the results to prove. The macro figures were looking good, economy was strong, um, growth, uh, development was taking place, um, unemployment was low. Uh, even uh, inequality of income was getting better. Uh, Gini coefficient went down below 0.4% for the first time. Uh, the stock market was strong. Uh, for example, when I took over as Prime Minister, it was 850. KLSC was 850. When I left, just before the election, it was 1860 or something. I can't remember exactly. Uh, the ringgit was getting stronger. Uh, commodity prices were better. Uh, all the corporate bodies' assets, cash level were, you know, increasing very significantly, and we were taking care of the welfare of the people. You know, 
Um, you know, every single sector was, you know, even the middle class, uh, we gave 2% uh, reduction in income tax. Uh, and if you earn 4,000 and below, I think you don't pay any tax. Uh, and um, I, I was giving a, a lot more exemptions to every uh, strata of the society. The, 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 the scale of the loss was, uh, was beyond our comprehension to begin with. So I think we were just uh, a state of shock and we were traumatized. Everybody was traumatized. Uh, but we gathered our thoughts and, and we decided that uh, we have to accept the will of the people and then just move on, you know, for the sake of the country. What is important is for Malaysia. Malaysia has, uh, you know, to continue. There has to be a going concern and we have to uh, make sure that the welfare and interests of people will not be affected in any way. Instability or even internal strife will certainly be the last thing that I wanted for the country. I don't think it'll be N or BN, but it will be a hard uh, road forward. Uh, it is certainly not for, for the faint-hearted people. Uh, you, you know, for you to succeed uh, against uh, such uh, difficult uh, odds, you have to have the courage uh, to succeed. You've got to have the self-belief. You have to be very patient. Uh, you have to, uh, to, to, to see yourself as being able to convince the people to regain their confidence and their trust. Don't forget, uh, Reform Masi took 20 years. 20 years to be where they are today. At one time, uh, in, in 2008, they were almost wiped out. You know, when Pak Lah came back. 2004. 2004, sorry. 2004. They were almost uh, annihilated, but, you know, they persevered. They came back, you see. And some of them can tell you some of the horrific stories during the early days of reformers. Even you know some of the leaders, uh, you know, uh, they spend quite some time, uh, you know, as guests of the government, so to speak. <laughs> uh, but uh, things are different now. <laughs>